Ted Cruz got caught liking porn on Twitter. And this is how Funny or Die dealt with the allegation. How am I supposed to explain to my family that Ted Cruz might watch my videos? Actual porn stars ridiculing him. You, Ted Cruz. On behalf of all porn stars, I just want to say, gross. Here we go! The brains behind it, David Litt. Erstwhile Obama speechwriter, now flexing his political pecs here at Funny or Die. We thought about not just making sure that it's funny, but also what is the political angle. Ted Cruz thinks victims of rape and incest shouldn't be able to get abortions. Cruz later cleared it all up on CNN. He had a staffer who accidentally hit the wrong button. Political comedy in general is having a moment. Comedians are the philosophers of the times right now. Last night I solved Afghanistan. Solved! And the Emmy goes to... Alec Baldwin just won an Emmy for his SNL portrayal of the president. I suppose I should say, at long last, Mr. President, here is your Emmy. <laughs> he never won for The Apprentice. Vents his SNL anger on Twitter. Now, nine months into an objectively tumultuous Trump administration, comedy is still grappling with exactly what to do here, how to do it. We wish that we could just make fart jokes. That would be nice. But this is not a moment for that. Kathy Griffin went too far holding Trump's severed head for a photo. She lost a lot of work, while the president himself retweets gifs of him hitting Hillary with a golf ball. This president is so unlike what you're supposed to be as the head of a country. Joy Behar talks about Trump on The View. He pardoned an immigrant hater basher, Arpaio. Sheriff Arpaio. Yeah. And just wrote a book about him, The Great Gas Bag. There is so much grist for the comedy mill that is not even funny. Having said that, it's a little scary at the same time. And comedy sometimes is at its best when there's a little fear involved. Funny or Die just opened a D.C. office. They're beefing up politics. Nice. Lit's the guy. I dress like I'm from D.C., so it's okay. kind of, uh, you know, yeah. basically Banana Republic outlet mall chic. Walking around the office, David sticks out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Lit did the jokes for Obama, like the anger translator at the 2015 correspondence dinner. Rising seas, more violent storms. You got mosquitoes, sweaty people on the train, stinking it up. He's also just written a funny, self-deprecating book, Thanks Obama, My Hopey Changey White House Years. I didn't want to write about my time in the inner circle because I was not in the inner circle. His first term. Yes. He basically didn't know who you were. Oh, he definitely didn't know who I was. No. He makes funny videos. Give it up for the Trump family! Whoa! Okay, that's we feel like it legitimizes the content we make. We're like, why do people care about this so much? And then David can just rattle off, boom, boom, boom. Okay. I think we are revealing who Trump is even faster than he's revealing himself. But does all this really make any difference whatsoever? Take it away, Ellen's video doctoring. He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee it. The hands annoy him. And also, the thing that really seems to get to him is any joke that implies that someone has more power or is more respected than he is. SNL did the joke about President Bannon. Hey, Donald, that's enough fun for tonight. Can I have my desk back? Yes, of course, Mr. President. I'll go sit at my desk. Yeah. <laughs> I think that really was one of the reasons that Trump turned on him. Lit first met the FOD folks when President Obama did the FOD collaboration between two ferns. Some of the episodes have probably been a little bit better than this. You know, for example, the one with Bradley Cooper. Yeah, everybody loves Bradley. Good for him. I assume you've tried to get Trump on between two friends. It's a badge of honor, and it's a badge that none of us would ever feel good about putting on him. Listen, most coastal comedians are left-leaning. If you walked around the room saying, who voted for Trump, you would not find a lot of takers. Some argue that some of this comedy is counterproductive to their cause, humanizing. Fallon ruffling candidate Trump's hair for fun. Or spicy yucking it up on Kimmel. This is obviously a hard job. And I mean, <laughs> and it turned out to be kind of funny in a lot of ways. Was it for funny? you? <laughs> <laughs> but is President Trump, who declined to attend the correspondence dinner this year, is he actually funny. He's pretty funny. Just the way he sort of, you know, lumbers around. He's kind of physically funny. And of course, the hair is hilarious. Ah, uh, yes. I think he I has a sense of it. Yes. I, we do. We have I think he knows what he's doing. I do too. I don't think he's funny. I think he has a sense of timing. I could have said, Mitt, drop to your knees. He would have dropped to his knees. Usually it's basically about asserting power, like the kind of joke that 
somebody says in high school, you know, and what they're really doing is bullying. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. President Trump can be unintentionally funny. Nambia's health system is increasingly self-sufficient. Nambia doesn't exist. Sounds like a John Oliver joke. In Uruguay, a country that you think about so little that you didn't even notice that that's not Uruguay, <laughs> this is Uruguay. <laughs> And that's part of the issue my, for comedians my, these days. Uh -huh. It's a good moment for political comedy, but it's also a difficult moment for exactly the same reason. I mean, you have the press secretary at the White House hiding behind a bush to avoid taking questions. Bring the bushes out here, guys. Thanks very much. All right. I don't know where you go with that. I mean, there's not a, it's hard to exaggerate that. Or, for that matter, it's this. Really the crowd was massive. This goes all the way down here, all the way down. This was a massive crowd. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline you could show in Los Angeles. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.